So now we're going to go over what I usually talk to a patient about when I'm trying to explain to them what a tissue dysfunction actually is. This handout that everybody should have a copy of right now, this is the handout that I use. It's laminated so the patients think, oh, it must be legit. Anything laminated looks legit. So note to self, I'll email this color copy to everybody so that you can print it out and then laminate it and have it to, uh, to draw with a dry erase marker on or just use it to, uh, to talk to your patients about a tissue dysfunction so you can educate them and tell them what it is and explain it fully. So the tissue dysfunction that I, uh, that I usually talk to them about, I'll start off by kind of pointing at this picture and letting them know that this is the normal tissue, those nice striped areas that are even, nice and parallel to one another. That's the normal tissue and it's surrounding a piece of abnormal tissue or a tendinosis. This tissue right here, if you expand that and you look on a microscope, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to not have inflammatory cells present, but it's going to be a big jumbled mess of random collagen fibers, just kind of like an internal scab. This, on the other hand, this is your normal fibers under a microscope. They run parallel, they're nice and organized, and they can take some tensile force. They won't fail like this tissue if it's put under too much load. So if we expand this piece of tissue here, that's what we're looking at. It's the jumbled mess, but as you apply the appropriate forces, that being this graph represented here, if you apply the appropriate forces to load the tissue to the point where you get a little bit of pain produced, which means that it's enough force to pull on that piece, but not too much to create an inflammatory response, meaning that you tore this piece up a little bit more, and you get an ouch gone, type of response when you're doing your loaded repeated exercises throughout the day, what will occur is that this tissue will start to become remodeled and have better organization. It actually replaces the junky scar tissue in here with better high quality organized tissue. And as you progress that and you progress the forces, what will happen is now this has more strength in it than this did. So after, let's say, a week or two of doing the appropriate exercise to load it in an ouch-gone type fashion, you'll get this. Now if you add more load to it and it's still an ouch-gone fashion, you'll advance it to this. And now what will happen to the original exercise that you were doing when you first had this piece of tissue, that won't be enough load during this phase or this phase. It will not be enough load to produce any sort of ouch. It will have enough tensile strength to resist this much load and it will not produce pain. That's why you have to progress forces with these tendinosis type problems. You have to add enough force so that when it does advance and you do have better quality tissue in there, you can still apply the right amount of force to start to replace the leftover cruddy scar tissue that's still remaining and add better high quality tissue. And again, you advance the force again and this is usually in a span of about two to six weeks from here to here two weeks for anybody younger, six weeks for people who are older or those who only do it about three times a day versus the appropriate eight times a day for about 10 repetitions each exercise that they perform. What will happen is in that span of about two to six weeks, you will have that tissue replaced as long as they're progressing their exercise in a manner where it does give them the ouch gone, ouch gone type of symptomatic response. You need to warn them that if they do get the ouch and then it lingers for more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, and it's still like a throbby achy toothache, that pain level is now increased as a direct result of loading it with your repeated exercise, you need to take a full 24 hours off of the exercise. During that 24 hours off, you can ice it, you need to rest it, um, there might be a little extra swelling located in the area. Um, you can give it some compression if you'd like to, some easy passive range of motion to kind of flush that tissue. But the big thing you want is you want that symptom that's created from the exercise that's now flared up, you want that symptom to go back down to zero before you start to try the exercises again. And when you try those exercises again, it should be only half as many repetitions. So let's say you do, um, you're trying to get them to do eight sets of 10 repetitions of this specific exercise that will pull on that piece of scar tissue and create the ouch gone effect. 
what you want to do is you only need to start with half after you've had to take that full 24 hour rest period so let's do let's say eight sets of five okay and after those eight sets of five repetitions if they're doing okay and it does not produce any inflammation you want to go back to doing the eight sets of ten or you can kind of stair step them down maybe the second day after inflammation has been created you do eight sets of seven or eight repetitions and then back to ten but you want to get back to doing enough repetitions to stimulate this tissue to remodel fully back to this so that's what I like to tell my patients is there's a little area where if you don't do any load at all you will get no change so that's why people who have like a running injury and they take a full three weeks off they're like fine I'm just gonna rest this thing it keeps getting inflamed and irritated I'm just gonna rest it for three full weeks and then what they do is they add no load to that tissue no change occurs and guess what they still have the exact same piece of tissue right here it doesn't change because they're not loading it appropriately so that's what this little timeline is for if you have no load on this you get no change in the tissue it doesn't do this it doesn't advance to a higher quality piece of tissue if you give it the amount of load that gets it in a pain on pain off type of manner again what we are showing with this if you can do that that's perfect that's the type of load that will actually create an advancement of the tissue formation of the appropriate higher quality tissue and fully resolve that tendinosis if you look at different uh, exercises what will happen with some of them is let's say you've got a runner and the runner starts to run and it hurts for the first two miles and then it warms up that's this area here what you'll notice is these runners will always come in and say yeah it's pretty good it holds up you know the first two miles are sore but then I can run the extra you know four or five miles and then it gets inflamed and it's really sore and achy that's what you're looking at it's the tendinosis with too much load meaning this piece was loaded too much it warms up the first couple of miles but then after those couple of miles this gets irritated inflamed and you've got this it's the same scenario it gets inflamed so that's what you do not want to create whenever you're doing the repeated loading exercise throughout the day you want it just enough to where it gives the pain on pain off type of symptom response and that pain that any residual pain is gone within 15 to 20 minutes and then it's gone and they do not feel it it's back at a zero level where it should be if they do too much like we said if they go to here and it increases and lingers for a long period of time you've got to give them that 24 hours off and that's the excessive load portion over here that we're talking about that will create irritation and inflammation to that tissue and basically tear this part it's almost like tearing off a scab it bleeds you cannot just start hammering away on a piece of tissue that's irritated or inflamed so give it that full 24 hours rest so this is what I like to do with all of my patients with a tendinosis I like to explain this whole concept so they understand it just as well as I do or at least have some sort of knowledge about what is going on with them because when you give them an exercise especially people who are who are not really prone to being athletes or they're not really um, high-level athletes that have pushed pushed through anything at all they have to know that that ouch gone pain is absolutely 100 percent different than the ouch lingering pain this will fix it this will keep the tendinosis indefinitely like this you have to explain it fully to them or they will not do the appropriate exercise to progress this tissue to normal tissue where it doesn't hurt anymore so this is what I usually explain to them. You all have a copy of it now. This is all on YouTube, but I wanted to have at least a good 10 minute segment to where we explained this whole laminate to where people could see how I go through this and how we go through this with a patient that comes into the CUNA clinic with a tendinosis.